This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. Good evening everyone, I'm Angel Hakob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on 9TV. The battle of the bulge is on the rise, with the last couple of decades seeing more and more adults and children reportedly obese in the Philippines. According to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, one in four Filipino adults are overweight, while one in 20 are obese. And while genetics may be a risk factor, it is usually a person's sedentary lifestyle and eating habits that lead to the path of obesity. There is a point to where uh, the hereditary aspect comes into play. If you look at a mother and daughter, they may have the same body type, the body structure. But more typically, obesity comes with the diet that the family is observing. Staying trim can help fight off health complications such as high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, cancer, and many others. Childhood obesity tends to translate into adult obesity later on. For those who are overweight or at the borderline status of being obese, surgical interventions uh, are typically reserved for those who have uh, tried uh, weight loss but have not succeeded. Particularly balloon surgery where they place a balloon within the stomach, it effectively reduces the size of the stomach so we feel full faster. At the end of the day, losing weight doesn't have to be an impossible undertaking. Most health experts recommend small changes in our diet and exercise routines that when added up in the long run would have far-reaching improvements on our general health. I always tell my patients that uh, find a sport you like to do or an activity you like to do and do it regularly because the more active you are, the less chances you are to become obese. What are some health problems associated with obesity? How can you determine your healthy weight? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Imelda Cayole Ang, Chair of the Philippine Heart Association Council on Coronary Artery Disease. Also joining us tonight is Dr. Juliet Balderas, Chair of the Philippine Heart Association Council on Rheumatic Fever, Rheumatic Heart Disease. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Welcome evening. to the show. Good evening. <laughs> Tonight, we'll be talking about obesity. Obesity or obesity? How is it pronounced? Obesity. Okay, obesity. So tonight, we'll use obesity. Obesity. What is obesity? Dr. Juliet, let's start with you. Well, it's, it's more of a gaining body mass. Uh, we will talk of obesity more of an acquired heart disease, probably even in children and adults, mm -hmm. wherein they gain weight more than what is expected for their age. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about obesity, we usually measure based on the body mass index. It has been accepted to be the best uh, scientifically based uh, measurement for obesity compared with overweight. So if we differentiate overweight from obesity, it's more of uh, the measurements in BMI mm -hmm. based on the age of the patient. Okay. Or in, generally in adults, it's a BMI more than 30 is obese, a BMI more than 25 is overweight. Okay, so when we speak of uh, being obese and overweight, we always hear uh, as you've mentioned, yes. body Standard, mass yes. index. Yes. So how do we measure or how do we compute for one's body mass index? Okay, Dr. body Melda. mass index is computed by getting the weight of the patient in kilograms and okay. then dividing it by the height in meters. Then you square that. Mm -hmm. So I usually remember that by uh, thinking of kilograms over meters square. Mm -hmm. Is there an, uh, an app that we can find um, 
uh, for children. <laughs> there, there's one for yes, children. Yes, for children, you can you can Google the normal uh, BMI in children as early as one year old. Mm -hmm. So there's a BMI until 19 years of age. So we we have what we call the percentile chart based on the BMI. So in children, we define overweight as more than the 85th percentile for the age, 85th to. Uh, 95th percentile, anything more than that is already obese. So if we chart the weight of the child every time they come to us for follow-up, then more or less masasabi natin kung medyo going overbound and we can give the the discussion with the parents on how we can prevent obesity. Mm -hmm. This is in children, Yes, no? it's in children. In children. How about in adults? When, you know, the adults are very well aware of what they eat, the kind yes. of lifestyle they have, uh, very, very well aware of, uh, as you mentioned, no, body mass index. Mm -hmm. So in adults, um, body mass index of uh, more than 25 in the international classification is considered as overweight. While if you have a BMI of more than 30, you are obese. But there, is a, there was a WHO World Health Organization consultation regarding the applicability of this classification among Asian nations such as ours. So in our country, we use a BMI cutoff of more than 23 for overweight and more than 25 or 27 for obese. Mm -hmm. So we have lower cutoff compared to the, our European or American counterparts. Why is there a lower cutoff? Um, is it uh, the structure of the Asians, in, in this case Filipinos? Yes, you're right. Uh, they have found out by reviewing several data or studies coming from these different nations that we have a lower, a higher risk uh, at a lower BMI level so that uh, we could uh, prevent uh, further or complicated diseases such as hypertension, heart disease, by addressing um, the BMI at a lower cutoff. Mm -hmm. And are Filipinos, um, uh, is there a large percentage of Filipinos that are overweight? Dr. Yes, Julia? I think we have statistics for it. Parang they compared it with the U.S. statistics because it's a global concern. Mm -hmm. Like example, in 2010, ang uh, obese in uh, the Philippines is 2.1%, while in the U.S. it's already 8%. Mm -hmm. So now it's already 30% in the U.S., now we're going 20, 21%. But since we are third world, of course, mas marami pa rin ng malnourished in the country. Like we have a running of 21% malnourished, compared of 1% malnourished, but because of the implications of obesity in children, tsaka pag adults, you might not have noticed that in the hospitals, we now have a lot of uh, heart bypass as early as young as 40 to 50 years old. Wow. So if it dates back, sabi nila, heart disease develops in 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. So if a 50 year old undergoes bypass or angioplasty, it means 20 mga, after 15 years old, nag-uumpisa na ang, ano, ang plaque formation. Mm -hmm. And it only manifests 20, 30 years old heart attack. Normally, di ba, uh, the heart attack should occur after 55, 50 yes. to 70. But now, we in the hospital where we have done, like there's a Z benefit, we're in field health covers for uh, free uh, coronary artery bypass surgery, and you have 163 patients who have lined up in the last year since we've started the Z-Benefit. 36% na yun, less than 55. Wow. So at, that means the concern for obesity as a risk factor for, for coronary, coronary heart artery disease, disease is true. Oh, so yeah. coronary uh, artery disease is just one of the many risk factors uh, or health concerns brought about yes. by being obese. obese. What um, we can uh, talk more about that, no? Yes. Uh, aside from uh, the plaque that accumulates a heart and the, the blood flow is not able to circulate, yes. and which causes a heart attack, heart attack, no? There are other risk factors uh, involved when one is obese, uh, Dr. Imelda. Um, actually, the risk factors uh, involved in a patient no, having overweight or obese uh, could also be uh, like causes like uh, genetic factors mm -hmm. and environmental factors there are if you notice there are some people who eat a lot and then they don't gain weight yes and there are some people who just eat a just little eat a little and they they became they become oversized mm -hmm. so that is uh, the play of our genes there are actually a lot uh, there are already several genes identified but um, uh, the treatment 
or intervention regarding these genetic problems are still on the research side. Um, but on the environmental factors, it is the lack of exercise or physical inactivity. Mm -hmm. um, basically, because obesity is accumulation, excess fat, so excess energy in the body. So if you eat more, you accumulate, you acquire, you have input of a lot of energy, and then you don't exercise, you don't spend this energy, then you will accumulate and become obese. Mm -hmm. And eventually, uh, obesity-related illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, uh, osteoarthritis uh, will, uh, no, will come up mm -hmm. right, among those individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, also one of the risk factors I understand is the lack of sleep. There's a certain uh, hormone that uh, is um, the appetite, uh, is it stimulating. an appellant? Yeah, stimulating oh. hormone that when one is not able to sleep well, um, not with the sleep, but sa kain. Uh, how does that work? Uh, Actually, uh, during waking hours, we have to stay awake. And our, there, is, there are only two types of hormones influencing our eating habits. So one is if one is um, the appetite stimulant and one is the appetite suppressant hormone. So if you are awake, um, the body is told to uh, by that, by the brain, the, through this hormone, to eat because mm -hmm. you're awake. You must, uh, because you're spending energy, uh, you have to eat energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to maintain balance in the body. So, regarding our, um, the night shifters, those who are um, involved in the PBOs, uh, call center agents, um, yes. there are increasing incidences of um, heart diseases, hypertension, even among young persons as young as um, 21, mm -hmm. 24 years old, consulting us already because of hypertension. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what you've mentioned yes, earlier, so no, Doctor. Even that in children. Even in children, in, in teens, mm -hmm. and in young adults. Uh, before we cut to a break, you've mentioned those who work uh, late hours or irregular hours. Is there one one healthy tip that, that you can recommend. Um, you know, it's a job, so you have to do it. You have to perform, you have to be alert and focused. But at the same time, your health sac is, is sacrificed. So if before the break, no? Any, just Choose one the tip. food, probably, you okay. eat. And then every two hours, do not starve yourself. So if you eat more often, but small frequent feeding, then it might probably solve the job. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Melda? The same, because if you really have I don't have any choice, you have to do the job. But if it's really affecting your job, I really advise my patient to shift today. Okay. <laughs> okay, so again, we have a choice, uh, a healthy choice, or uh, to, to shift to another hour, another a more hour. Um, a healthier hour, yes. so to speak. So we'll talk more about obesity, obesity, Dr. Juliet, Dr. Imelda, all that and more when MedTalk returns. Did you know that eating fast can cause your stomach to get full long before your brain knows it? To make sure your brain also turns off the appetite switch, you need to eat slowly. Experts suggest that you lay down your utensils between bites or use chopsticks to ensure that you slow down while eating. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about obesity or obesity. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. This time, doctors, let's talk about the myths uh, about obesity. Myth number one, if you're obese, you can blame your genes. We were talking about this earlier, about uh, can be genetics, genetics. Yeah, yes. that, plays a, that does play a role in uh, one becoming obese. Dr. Imelda. You can actually blame it partly. Okay. Partly okay. because uh, obesity, being overweight, is multifactorial. Even if you have it in your genes, mm -hmm. but you control yourself and you exercise a lot, you spend a lot of energy. So there's energy output. 
uh, more than energy intake, then um, it is um, less likely that you will become overweight. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is this uh, caution when computing your body mass index. Now, going back to the definition of um, overweight or obese, if you are a muscular individual uh, and you compute your body mass index and it is high, don't worry. You, have, you just have to consult the doctor because it does not necessarily mean that your increase in body mass index is secondary to an over uh, excess fat. It mm -hmm. could be because of the muscle. Okay. So, and if you exercise, sometimes you gain a lot of muscle. Yes. And that's what, uh, what makes you heavier. Yes. And to those who are big bone, does it also um, contribute to when you compute for the uh, body mass index? The big oh. bone? I think the BMI will cure the big bone issue. Mm -hmm. So, if you compute, pwede na rin hindi. But about the genes, yes. they say uh, if the parents are obese, they can also raise obese children. Okay. And yun siguro ang part na hindi mo mamamodify. You have non-modifiable factors sa obesity. Mm -hmm. One of that is of course the genes. Pero once you have it in the genes, then it places you at high risk. Parang dodoble ang trabaho mo to prevent it. Mm -hmm. So you become more aware, more, more aware, conscious. Yes. So, um, so lifestyle modification will be primary na importante sa'yo if you have the genes. Okay. Mm. Myth number two, carbs are all bad. What are the bad carbs, Dr. Imelda? Um, the bad carbs are those carbohydrates that uh, in only increase your appetite, meaning uh, they have lower, they have higher uh, calories, and yet they don't fill you up. Mm -hmm. um, well, the good carbs are the, actually, uh, like rice, no, um, uh, could be classified as a good carb because as you eat, um, you can feel the fullness in your stomach. But um, the carbohydrates are uh, compared to foods high in fibers, they are less, um, uh, less likely to fill you up mm -hmm. so compared to fi high fiber foods. Mm -hmm. Not so, all carbs are bad. Not all carbs are bad, okay. You mentioned rice. Uh, red rice, white rice? Red rice uh, is heavier you know, when you weigh this too. Uh, it is heavier. It, it, it has lower uh, calories but will fill you up more because mm -hmm. of uh, more fiber. More um, because if you produce white rice, there are a lot of it that was removed yes. from the original grain. Mm -hmm. Okay, myth number three, doctors. The longer you work out, the more weight you lose. Dr. Julia. Well, that has something to do with the quality of physical activity, moderate or vigorous activity. Like example, you choose to walk around, pero leisure walking, leisure, moderate activity. What is recommended is actually a moderate activity, which is 30 minutes, three times a week. Mm -hmm. for you to be able to weight loss or as a part of parang health advice to prevent obesity. So, that is a very important issue. Like, ano bang pwedeng gawin, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So, it's not just uh, walking around or ano, but you have to qualify the what type of activity will equate to ano, weight loss. So, ang recommended sa bata nga, di ba, yung PE. PE mm -hmm. is a vigorous activity which should be one hour a week. But how many times do we have... Uh, Ano ba ang PE sa school? Uh, ano physical, physical activities that they have? 30 minutes once yeah. a week, right? Once a or I think less. I less, not, yes, yeah. that's why. So we have to encourage the kids to have a sports activity which will encourage moderate to vigorous activity. Okay, so that's for the kids. On weekends, no, we, mm -hmm. um, we encourage them to either swim, play ball, yes. uh, run around. How about for adults? You know, it's a very busy week. You're, you're seated in the office or you're standing up, uh, whatever job requirement you have that will not um, allow you the time to uh, work out. What work. do you recommend they do on the weekends? Actually, uh, the, this is an area of active research, the prescribed or exercise, exercise prescription among adults. Mm -hmm. But in the guidelines, so the American Heart Association guidelines, in the management of obesity, they recommend up to 150 to 300 minutes per week of exercise. But going back to our very busy adults, you know, like 
if you're walk, walk, working in an office and you are just sitting there in front of your computer, um, we have a program in the Philippine Heart Association that you uh, engage in uh, around 30 minutes. Uh, if you're in, uh, in the office, you, know, you engage in you know, 5 to 10 minutes uh, from sitting down, then you stand up and walk around the office. Okay. And if you're in, at home, uh, the amount the, you, you restrict the time of watching TV or just lying down in your couch up to two hours. Mm -hmm. Then that, um, of course, healthy eating habits Always. will also contribute. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we really just have to be conscious no? of, uh, of the things we do, the things we shouldn't do, yes. the things we should remember in, in order to take good care of our health. Like standing up, uh, walking five minutes, Once maybe yeah. after lunch, no? instead of sitting down right away, you have enough time to you know, maybe walk back and forth in, in your, your in children, area. In children, no view time more than two hours. Okay. Oh, is this on a school day or a <laughs> No, yeah, any day. There's a research Early. wherein they found out that for Filipino kids, the usual viewing time is seven to eight hours. Wow, that's so a lot. So we are really raising kids with heart disease. Okay. So parang uh, AHA recommendation is two hours, both for TV and computer. computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next myth, fewer calories are burned at night than during the day. Fewer calories burned at night. Hmm. It's a myth because um, you can do a lot of things uh, at night. Like you can also jog. Okay. So you can burn a lot of calories if you are busy during the daytime and you do your workout in the nighttime, then mm -hmm. you will have um, a lot of calories being burned. Okay. But Next, if you sleep, oh yes, doctor. But if, if you sleep, sleep <laughs> there's a rule that you should not eat two to four hours before sleeping because you don't. Kung matutulog ka nila, no? Because yes. you don't use up the calories. Mm -hmm. So, parang basic rule to the weight loss of, to lose weight is no food before two hours. Before, before sleep because if you don't burn that you it yes. gets stored the sugar and right. that is you know uh, you gain the pounds if you mm -hmm. acquire or you practice that habit no sometimes because you're just really so tired already after yeah, just, after your work and after a meal and uh, you just eat and sleep yes but two hours so like um last meal should be at seven seven if you or sleep eight. at nine if you sleep 10. at nine so <laughs> eight if you sleep at ten Yes, if you eat at 10, mm -hmm. sleep at 1, mm -hmm. diren, no? <laughs> diren, eh. But w what would you recommend that, uh, what kind of food or what should be on one's plate at night? I think uh, so. For dinner, rather. For, for dinner. dinner. Actually, um, for, even for breakfast or lunch, you should eat uh, foods high in fiber or food that will fill you up. Even if you take less of it, um, so that you will feel um, not you will feel um, full already before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sabi nila you divide your plate into four. Mm -hmm. Then one is carbohydrate, protein, and fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So that might be a healthy way to manage your diet. Mm -hmm. Portion size, talaga Portion size, trick, no? Yes. Uh, sometimes, again, uh, because we're so tired, we just want to, uh, <laughs> it's to eat. It's difficult to prepare. <laughs> yeah, to, to eat, uh, to prepare, to um, have that feeling of being full. So you can sleep well. They say you sleep well pag busog ka. But again, mm. two hours no, before you sleep is the recommended time. That you have your dinner. Next myth, a low-fat diet is the best way to manage obesity. It's a low-fat diet. This is a myth because um, obesity is not only caused by increase in fat, but it should be a low-calorie diet. Mm -hmm. So you don't, uh, it is not only fat that can increase, uh, that, is, that is a source of uh, calories. It could also be carbohydrates and proteins. It's just that you gain a lot more in, for example, one gram of fat, a lot more calories compared to one gram of carbohydrates or protein. Mm -hmm. So that's a myth. It's not the fat, but okay. the calories, the and, energy. And you mentioned calories, no? There's mm -hmm. also a way to compute for how much or how many calories one should consume within a day, the age, 
height, height and the weight. And the weight. No, there's also a way to compute for yes. that. Yes. Okay. Next myth: If you eat and exercise consistently, you will never gain weight. Dr. Julia. Consistently, we have to define consistently. Uh, of course. That's, that's true because you have weight and activity are the two important risk factors. So if you have the habit mm -hmm. developed, that's why you talk of a lifestyle, what is your habit towards eating and, uh, and exercise, then that will be important. Mm -hmm. Develop your habit mm -hmm. of uh, 30 minutes, three times a week, but that's not easy to do. No, it's, a, it's really <laughs> so it's easier said than done. It's no? easier said than uh, done. And um, again, it's a habit. Uh, no. from, from waking up, eating the right type of food, having that right attitude as well, that today you're going to eat healthy, you're going to sleep on time, <laughs> you're going to eat portion size, and you will try your best to exercise. Yes. Last myth, snacking contributes to weight gain and obesity. So you have to define snacking. If um, okay. In, um. in a Filipino setting, our snacks really ha are high-calorie snacks. Like um, chips, are the chips? Um, the it's older nice to ones. snack on chips. Yes, <laughs> must admit. <laughs> the older, you know, the older there ones are like the vegetable chips. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> the dried fruits. Okay, bayon. Okay. So vegetable chips, dried fruit. Yes, uh, better dried if it's fruit. the real fruit and real, real fruit. vegetable. Yes, real if fruit you can. And vegetable. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to define what is the snack because in the European or American. Uh, culture, the, their snack is really uh, vegetable, mm -hmm. the raw vegetables. Yeah. So carrot, fruits. celery. Like four to five servings mm -hmm. of fruit a day mm -hmm. is almost like the snack. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the recommendation of the Philippine Heart Association. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the Philippine Heart Association. Before we cut to a break, it's really, um, you, you have to talk about the heart when you talk about um, obesity, no? Yes. It, it, you, you, you have to link it to that so people will understand more the effect of uh, the um, he yes. health ah, yes. risk if you do not take care of your health. Obesity no? is a risk factor for developing heart disease. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, as mentioned earlier, even the children now have yes. uh, uh, heart disease. Heart disease. So actually we recommend, uh, we have what you call the Pediatric Cardiovascular Risk Reduction Initiative. We're in as early as... Uh, nine years old we have to screen the kids and obesity is just one of them one out of the six risk factors which we have to screen mm -hmm. like we screen their family history there we get their weight and their height we check for lipids mm -hmm. so parang may um, mandatory screening especially if the father and mother are both obese or with high lipids because mm -hmm. some parents take in drugs or like drugs for decreasing the cholesterol, drugs for hypertension. Mm -mm. So kung my parent siya who is hypertensive and with high cholesterol, or who has a parent who had a heart attack, even in the family in the three pedigrees, mga tita, ganun, who mm -hmm. had a heart attack, stroke, then all the children should have to be screened for the risk factor for heart disease mm -hmm. in adulthood. I mentioned that because uh, when we come back, we'll talk about um, obesity in children and teens. All that and more when Med Talk returns. Most men tend to gain weight as they age. This is brought about by many factors such as a person's genes, hormones, and slowing metabolism. For Francis Allen Samonte, it was his sedentary lifestyle and high-fat diet that added those extra inches on his waist. Though he was not a smoker or a heavy drinker, he had a 48-inch waistline and was clearly obese at 320 pounds. My lifestyle before was really sedentary. I didn't have any exercise in me. I usually just sat down, I just drove my car. No physical activity whatsoever. The 31-year-old financial advisor was also suffering from hypertension and high levels of bad cholesterol 
and blood sugar. He took medications designed for a 60-year-old and at one point was even considering surgery to remove his excessive weight. Uh, at first, I didn't know. I didn't know that there was already a complication. It all started when I wanted to donate one of my kidneys to my sister. Uh, I didn't know that I had to be totally healthy in order for me to be able to be a donor. So I went to the doctor and uh, they asked me to get a blood test. That's where I saw the terror of my results. It was a wake-up call for me that I really needed to do something about it. But with the help of his fitness coach, he was able to shed off more than 110 pounds. Today, he's renewed spirit and disciplined in both exercising and maintaining a healthy diet have allowed him to appreciate life even more. My life now is totally different from my life before. First of all, all my medicines are now gone. And then I'm able to do stuff that I was not able to do before. Now I'm enjoying so much. We're back here on MedTalk still talking about obesity. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Doctors, Francis, who was uh, 320 pounds, lost 110 pounds. That's just, it's like so losing an entire <laughs> person, 110. Congratulations. And he looks so well. He looks healthy. Um, yes. I'm amazed. So what must be the turning point might be the lot of medicines he mm -hmm. has been taking for hypertension and Mm -hmm. cholesterol so that is a very important turning point even for children mm -hmm. if the BMI is more than 30 actually you have to have a weight program I mean you talk of a weight program you talk of you know, activity plus exercise and if you fail in the weight program plus hypertensive cut then you are taking a lot of meds mm -hmm. then weight loss programs plus additional Sometimes they con consider bariatric surgery. surgery. He was uh, he mentioned in the VTR that he considered uh, medical intervention. Yes. But medical uh, intervention, no surgical intervention. Surgical, surgical rather, surgical intervention. But I don't think he. Because if you it. fail in the medical for the surgical, you can do surgical interventions. Actually, uh, advised if mm -hmm. you have the other risk factors like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, mm -hmm. then the surgical intervention can. He looks so good. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for him. He's yes. an example that, uh, you know, with determination and um, your love for your health and your life, you want the quality of mm -hmm. your life, you can do it. Uh, doctors, uh, yes, you'd like to add something. Yeah, I'm just Imelda. curious uh, for how many years uh, mm -hmm. Francis has the been program to, to wait yes, to lose the program the weight. to lose weight. weight. Ah, okay, well we can, yeah, we'll, we'll check up on that. Uh, from what I understand, he's now 31, uh, and and he looks amazing. He looks like this. No yes. more meds, and uh, he's uh, on his way to uh, a healthy life. A health, a very healthy lifestyle. Two years, doctor. Thank Not you. Two years. Two years. Two years. Yes. That's very encouraging. But um, those who watch that uh, will, should not be discouraged, because even if a three to five percent decrease in their weight will improve their metabolism. Mm -hmm. So they they will have improved blood pressure, blood sugar, even as low as three to five percent uh, weight loss. Mm -hmm. So the pound happens. One, uh, one at a time, one and yes. so that's prevention. No? One at a yes. time, slowly. And it's not physiologic slowly. if you lose all the weight at the same time. Yes. So, uh, okay. Now, doctors, we have a caller on the line, Maricel. Hi, Maricel. Good evening. Evening, po. Uh, yung question mo for our doctors, please go uh, ahead. Apo, um, doctora, gusto ko lang may malaman yung ideal na weight sa akin for 34 years old na five four in height. Kasi minsan, kasi pakiramdam ko yung bloated. Although, ano, may ininom naman po ako na, ano, na parang supplement siya. Na mag ako ng weight, plus nag-workout ako twice a week. Opo, pero yung sa, nung, nung nagpa-weight naman ako sa clinic sa, sa work ko, yung kilos ko is at um, 53.5 kilos. <coughs> na pag sa pound daw po ay eh, convert to 100 feet. Ideal po kaya ito para sa age ko po. Okay. Okay, if you uh, remember yung 
uh, formula for computing the body mass index. If uh, you have your weight in kilos uh, divided by your height in meters, then you square that. If it falls on, uh, for us Asians, if it falls on 18.5 to 22.9, then that is the adequate weight for you. Okay. Pero, okay lang po ba, doktor, ako mag-take ako ng ano, mga supplement para mas mag-loss ng weight? Kasi yung family history po kasi namin, ano eh, may high blood, fresh breast, hypertension, tsaka sakit sa puso, kaya nag-aksa ko siya. Ah, supplements, yun nga, ang first step is i-compute mo yung uh, body mass index. Then, if uh, it falls on more than 23, then you are overweight. That is the, the next step is to look at kung ano yung blood pressure mo, kung ano yung blood sugar mo, and blood cholesterol. And if you are feeling anything like chest pain, yun, maghahanap po tayo ng mga, iba pang mga sakit. And then, pwede po tayo mag-consider ng gamot, depende po dun sa presence ng mga risk factors. Like, yung na-mention ko, kung, uh, these are risk factors for developing heart disease. So, kung meron po noon, then we can consider uh, a treatment, not a supplement. Mm -hmm. So, not all supplements are healthy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sometimes, parang later on, they found out na yung some supplements will cause pulmonary hypertension. Yung madaling mapagod. Uh, okay. So, not all supplements are healthy. So, you have to consult your doctor. Although sabi nila, if the BMI persists to be more than 30, lalo na yung sabi niya, may risk factor siya, hypertensive. Yes. And trial of supplements or trial for drugs to reduce the weight are also in line. Pwede rin magbigay yung doctor for mm -hmm. that. Pero dapat ang Usually doctor. Usually three months lang, yes. So, the doctor should be the one to uh, give the supplement. Yes. It's not that you... You pick it up because maybe yes. someone in your family is taking or some, it also. Or some a friend are, is taking it. Mm, mm -hmm. Some have, ano na yun? Uh, yung supplements with, uh, which can cause pulmonary hypertension. Nga, mga anxiolytic mm -hmm. drugs para hindi masuppress ang, ano, ang appetite. Ang appetite. Ang appetite. Ang appetite. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Alright. So, maraming salamat, Marisa. Thank oh, oh, Salamat. Thank you, Paul. You're Thank welcome. You. Okay, so uh, now we'll talk about uh, the kids, the kids, uh, the children and teens, obesity in yes. children and teens. You know, kids grow up so fast, mm -hmm. so it's not easy to determine if they're overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. So how will a parent, um, how, how can you um, arm the parent or educate the parent to be more aware of the rapid growth mm -hmm. of their child? Dr. Julia. Siyempre cute yung bata, di ba? Actually, some parents sabi, Doktora, hindi tumataba yung anak ko. Parang, what can we do with the milk? Mga ganun, para tumaba. But when you look at the chart, you know importance of uh, having your your date with your pediatrician, probably. Yes. And the duty of the pediatrician is to plot the weight of the child. Mm -hmm. measure namin ngayon sa recommendation at all, at all consultation time, pinaplot yung BMI. So when, and... The Philippine Pediatric Society had a study in the latest was 2003. Yung previous na uh, incidence of um, obesity, which was 2.1%, 4% na ngayon per 100,000. So talagang tumata sa obesity. And it's important kasi yung the children will take milk. Milk is something we do not take away in the diet, di ba? Mm -hmm. But our recommendation kung obese ang bata, we, we uh, recommend low-fat milk as early as two years of age, if the BMI is high. And in adolescent, non-fat milk is recommended, but not to take out the, the milk in the diet. Ah, okay. Pero yung milk is a ne something necessary which has to be carried out until adulthood. Mm -hmm. Pero milk talagang, it carries calories. So if you track yung sa BMI of the patient during a well, baby check up mm -hmm. as early as one year of age. Then you can guide the parents kung anong food ang ibibigay. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, weight is just one of the many things which we check di, di ba? in a well baby check up. So, yung nga, we also check their lipids and everything. Okay, so as a child pa lang, lalo na if they're predisposed to... Oh, tsaka yung juice, di ba? Okay. Fruit uh -oh. juice. How, how often do you give fruit juice? Mm -hmm. Sabi nila mga one glass is ano, no? 250 ml. 250 ml, no? At what Not, age is that? 
For all ages, not more than four ounces a day of uh, fruit juice. Mm -hmm. Kasi sugar containing ang juice, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, yun po ang recommendation. But sometimes, you know, when we notice or we know that the child is predisposed to uh, obesity or you, the child has that gene, uh -huh. it, it's uh, sometimes heartbreaking for a parent to, to put the child on a special, uh, a special menu diet. or a special oh, diet. Tama. That's why yun? you have to encourage ano, activity. Okay. Choose a sport as early as five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's good some schools will encourage uh, all children to choose one sport when they become high school. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, initiative. What causes obesity in um, children and teens before we cut to a break? What? Children and teens, siguro acquired yun, no? The way they are brought up, aside from, of course, yung sa genes. Mm -hmm. So treat the family. Treat the diet of the family and new activity of the family. Mm -hmm. The parents should be role models as to the activity mm -hmm. and type of food which they eat. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. especially Arnett. now that our children are exposed to iPads. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Those. It takes away their eating time, <laughs> no? Because they're so focused and they're so um, determined to finish maybe a game or oh. to watch a show. And they're sedentary. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh oh. Or sometimes, you know, um, um, it's also brought about by maybe they transfer schools. Um, it's an emotional um, time for the child, so mas na paparame yung kain, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. Okay, Our, uh, we have to cut to a break first, okay. doctors. And when we come back, we'll talk more about obesity. This time in adults, in teens, and in children. All that and more when Med Talk returns. You don't have to sweat it out at the gym to burn energy and lose weight. Everything that you do, from walking, sleeping, and even having sexual intercourse, require calories. For instance, if you are between 160 and 170 pounds, you burn 1.33 calories per minute of watching TV. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about obesity. This time, let's talk about the treatment plan or sticking to um, a guided plan so that the individual does not uh, encounter um, health uh, risks or um, health uh, complications brought about by obesity. Dr. Melda. Okay. Um, since obesity is a multifactorial uh, disease, um, the causes of which are multifactorial, then treatment is also... Uh, tailored to that. Now, the first treatment, the very important one, is uh, lifestyle modification because obesity is there is excess um, fat or um, stored in your body, then you have to burn it up. So, um, proper exercise, uh, diet uh, high in fiber like fruits and vegetables, and uh, lessening your physical inactivity like you, uh, you should. Um, schedules your exercise time, like mm -hmm. going to a gym, uh, or if you don't have any, uh, if you have, um, if you want to lessen your expenses, then you, you can just do brisk walking around the block. And also, if you have, if you are in a job in your office, then you can walk around, not really um, facing your computers all the time. And aside from lifestyle modification, you can also. Uh, compute your body mass index and if you have a uh, body mass index of more than 23 since we are Filipinos uh, that is considered overweight and you look at yourself you have hypertension or diabetes then you should consider drug treatment the only recommended drug treatment uh, from the American Heart Association is uh, Orlistat this is a lipase inhibitor that will block the absorption of fat, fat. in your even in children uh, in the mm -hmm. in the digestive system okay. so that excess fat will, will really go out of your gut 
So this is upon the recommendation of, of, yes. of your doctor after you've computed for your BMI and yes. after you realize that yes. you are overweight yes. or, obese. Or, or obese. You Even have... in children, the safest that we recommend is also orally stat. If there is a BMI more than 30, plus hypertension, plus high lipids, a short-term uh, orally stat for three to six months mm -hmm. is sometimes what we we use in children. Mm -hmm. well, uh, what effect will it have on the uh, patient uh, if, if they take this type of medication? Okay, the, the, the effect will be lessening absorption of fat and then the side effect will be there will be you will, you will feel bloated and then there are times that you really um, you really have this uh, oily Oily feces. Okay. Yes. And so that's, that's normal. Yes. That is yes. to be expected. Yeah, that is expected. In adults because and you don't uh, like in to children. Have absorption, so you mm. bring it out. In okay. Case. And that and um, uh, that's one of the many um, treatments or medications. That's the There's only approved uh, treatment. There are other treatments out there mm -hmm. that can be given in a short uh, short term, uh, around three months. But this is should be proper, properly monitored by, by your physician. Okay. Aside from that, if you are, your BMI is more than 40 or you are considered morbidly obese, then surgery, surgery. can be considered if you have done everything that you can, lifestyle modification mm -hmm. and all, then that can be considered. And there's already a registry, meaning uh, there are a lot of people abroad have undergone um, bariatric, bariatric surgery. surgery. Uh -huh. And that's, that's also uh, done here in, in the country? Yes. Okay. So there apart, are centers of course, doing the recommendation yes. of, of, of doctor. Your, your doctor. Any uh, group uh, that uh, patients support can... Support group. Yes, any support <laughs> group, doctors? For children, teens, and adults? Does their, their teammates in the sports activity probably is the mm -hmm. strongest support group because uh, it's something you encourage for them to do most of, until the... They grow older, so having a sports is something. It's a good support group. And f in I'm not sure of a lay group, no, yes. like a uh, support group. But the most important, actually, is the family. family. That is the basic group basic. Yes, that, that you can really turn to and that uh, can help you. No, in mm. this, uh, uh, it can be a struggle. But yes. uh, just like Francis, our case study, you can lose the weight and you can lead a very healthy and lifestyle. 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 Um, we have no more time, doctors. Yeah. Uh, time went by so fast. Uh, Dr. Juliet, a final message to well, all our viewers? Well, final message for children. I think you have to screen them for cardiovascular risk factors when they turn 10 years of age and until 18 years of age. It's not just about obesity. Maybe have them screened also for cholesterol and lipids mm -hmm. and hypertension. And all you need to do is see your doctor. Okay, thank you, Dr. Juliet. Dr. Imelda? Okay, for adults, uh, two things. You have to compute your body mass index. You don't have to go to a doctor and pay the professional fee. It is easy. You, you can just go to the internet and see that uh, computation. And second is for the overweight and obese patients, uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, you don't have to target a high percent weight, weight loss only at least three percent of your present weight that you lose then uh, that is um, reason for celebration already all right and we celebrate the uh, education that you have given all of us this <laughs> evening so maraming maraming salamat okay. we'd also okay. like to thank our viewers and our caller see you again next tuesday 7 p.m here on your scheduled on-air consultation you're watching med talk here on 9 tv this is angel hakob good night Overweight or at the borderline status of being obese, 
surgical interventions uh, are typically reserved for those who have uh, tried uh, weight loss but have not succeeded. Particularly balloon surgery where they place a balloon within the stomach, it effectively reduces the size of the stomach so we feel full faster. At the end of the day, losing weight doesn't have to be an impossible undertaking. Most health experts recommend small changes in our diet and exercise routines that when added up in the long run would have far-reaching improvements on our general health. I always tell my patients that uh, find a sport you like to do or an activity you like to do and do it regularly because the more active you are, the less chances you are to become obese. What are some health problems associated with obesity? How can you determine your healthy weight? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Imelda Cayole Ang, Chair of the Philippine Heart Association Council on Coronary Artery Disease. Also joining us tonight is Dr. Juliet Malderas. Chair of the Philippine Heart Association Council on Rheumatic Fever, Rheumatic Heart Disease. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Welcome evening. to the show. Good evening. <laughs> Tonight, we'll be talking about obesity. Obesity or obesity? How is it pronounced? Obesity. Okay, obesity. So tonight, we'll use obesity. Obesity. What is obesity, Dr. Juliet? Let's start with you. Well, it's, it's more of a gaining body mass. Uh, we will talk of obesity more of an aqu... This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. Good evening everyone, I'm Angel Hakob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on 9TV. The battle of the bulge is on the rise, with the last couple of decades seeing more and more adults and children reportedly obese in the Philippines. According to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, one in four Filipino adults are overweight, while one in 20 are obese. And while genetics may be a risk factor, it is usually a person's sedentary lifestyle and eating habits that lead to the path of obesity. There is a point to where uh, the hereditary aspect comes into play. If you look at a mother and daughter, they may have the same body type, the body structure. But more typically, obesity comes with the diet that the family is observing. Staying trim can help fight off health complications such as high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, cancer, and many others. Childhood obesity tends to translate into adult obesity later on. For those who are over... So now it's already 30% in the U.S. Now we're going 20, 21%. But since we are third world, of course, mas marami pa rin ng malnourished in the country. Like we have a running of 21% malnourished compared of 1% malnourished. But because of the implications of obesity in children, tsaka pag adults, you might not have noticed that in the hospitals, we now have a lot of uh, heart bypass as early as young as 40 to 50 years old. Wow. So if it dates back, sabi nila, heart disease develops in 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. So if a 50 year old undergoes bypass or angioplasty, it means 20 mga, after 15 years old, nag-uumpisa na ang, ano, ang plaque formation. Mm -hmm. And it only manifests 20, 30 years old heart attack. Normally, di ba, uh, the heart attack should occur after 55, 50 yes. to 70. But now, we in the hospital where we have done, like there's a Z benefit, we're in field health covers for uh, free uh, coronary artery bypass surgery. And you have 163 patients who have lined up in the last year since we've started the Z benefit. 36% na yun, less than 55. 
So at, that means the concern for obesity as a risk factor for for coronary, coronary artery, artery disease. disease is true. Oh, so yeah. coronary uh, artery disease is just one of the many risk factors uh, or health concerns brought about yes. by being obese. obese. What, um, we can uh, talk more about that, no? Yes. Uh, aside from uh, the plaque that accumulates a heart and the, the blood flow is not able to circulate yes. and which causes a heart attack, heart attack. No? there are other risk factors uh, involved when one is obese, uh, Dr. Imelda. Um, actually, the risk factors uh, involved in wired heart disease, probably even in children and adults, mm -hmm. wherein they gain weight more than what is expected for their age. Mm -hmm. So, if we talk about obesity, we usually measure based on the body mass index. It has been accepted to be the best uh, scientifically based uh, measurement for obesity compared with overweight. So if we differentiate overweight from obesity, it's more of uh, the measurements in BMI mm -hmm. based on the age of the patient. Okay. Or in, generally in adults, it's a BMI more than 30 is obese, a BMI more than 25 is overweight. Okay, so when we speak of uh, being obese and overweight, we always hear uh, as you've mentioned, yes. body Standard, mass yes. index. Yes. So how do we measure or how do we compute for one's body mass index? Okay, Dr. body Imelda. mass index is computed by getting the weight of the patient in kilograms and okay. then dividing it by the height in meters. Then you square that. Mm -hmm. So I usually remember that by uh, thinking of kilograms over meters square. Mm -hmm. Is there an, uh, an app that we can find? Um, uh, for children. There, there's one for yes, children. Yes, for children, you can, you can Google the normal uh, BMI in children as early as one year old. Mm -hmm. So there's a BMI until 19 years of age. So we, we have what we call the percentile chart based on the BMI. So in children, we define overweight as more than the 85th percentile for the age, 85th to uh, 95th percentile, anything more than that is already obese. So if we chart the weight of the child every time they come to us for follow-up, then more or less masasabi natin kung medyo going overbound and we can give the the discussion with the parents on how we can prevent obesity. Mm -hmm. This is in children, Yes, no? it's in children. In children. How about in adults? When, you know, the adults are very well aware of what they eat, the kind yes. of lifestyle they have, uh, very, very well aware of, uh, as you've mentioned, no? body mass index. Mm -hmm. So in adults, um, body mass index of uh, more than 25 in the international classification is considered as overweight. While if you have a BMI of more than 30, you are obese. But there, is a, there was a WHO World Health Organization consultation regarding the applicability of this classification among Asian nations such as ours. So in our country, we use a BMI cutoff of more than 23 for overweight and more than 25 or 27 for obese. Mm -hmm. So we have lower cutoff compared to the, our European or American counterparts. Why is there a lower cutoff? Um, is it uh, the structure of the Asians, in, in this case Filipinos? Yes, you're right. Uh, they have found out by reviewing several data or studies coming from these different nations that we have a lower, a higher risk uh, at a lower BMI level so that uh, we could uh, prevent uh, further or complicated diseases such as hypertension, heart disease, by addressing um, the BMI at a lower cutoff. Mm -hmm. And are Filipinos, um, uh, is there a large percentage of Filipinos that are overweight? Dr. Yes, Julia? I think we have statistics for it. Parang they compared it with the U.S. statistics because it's a global concern. Mm -hmm. Like example, in 2010, ang uh, obese in uh, the Philippines is 2.1%, while in the U.S. it's already 8%. Mm -hmm. 